All right, let's go ahead and continue. Uh, we're in paragraph 19 now. So um, he says, I baptize you with water. So this is Jesus. Oh, I mean, John the Baptist. Uh, he who is mightier than I is coming, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. John the Baptist foretells the Messiah, Christ, not only as the one who is coming in the Holy Spirit, but also as the one who brings the Holy Spirit, as Jesus will reveal clearly in the upper room. The upper room being um, where the disciples would meet out of fear for the Jews, right? And the upper room would have been probably culturally a space that was kind of reserved in the household. Um, might be like a study or something like that. Not, not necessarily a place where um, it's necessarily public in the home. Um, so it would have been a private place for the apostles to basically hide, <laughs> right? All right, so um, the important thing here is uh, this last part here is that the uh, Holy Spirit is fully within Christ and is also brought to us through Christ. So, Spirit is fully within Christ, but is also brought to us all by Christ. All right. So we got to remember that outside of um, this physical realm that we exist, the the Holy Spirit um, exists in in mysterious ways that are just kind of um, not necessarily measurable, right? Okay. So that's the relationship between the Holy Spirit and Christ. All right. Well, scroll on down. I uh, think this is a part two of nineteen. The Messiah is the beloved Son of the Father. His sol solemn exaltation cannot be reduced to the messianic mission of the servant of the Lord. In the light of the theophany at the Garden, uh, at the Jordan uh, River, Jordan. This exaltation touches the ministry of the very person of the Messiah. He has been raised up because he is the uh, beloved Son in whom God is pleased. The voice which says, "My beloved Son." So there it is. Remember the story of Christ's baptism. Crucial. Um, so, um, once again, baptism of Christ by John at the River Jordan is the theophany, or great revelation of God, of the Trinity. All right, crucial moment, and it comes right at the beginning of the Gospels, so um, gets us started right off the bat. All right, <clears throat> this mystery would be gradually, this paragraph 20, revealed and confirmed by Christ himself by means of everything that he did and taught in the course of his teaching and the messianic signs which Jesus performed before he came to the farewell discourse in the upper room. We find events and words uh, which constitute particularly important stages of this progressive revelation. Thus the evangelist Luke, who has already presented Jesus as full of the Holy Spirit and led by the Spirit in the wilderness, tells us that after the return of the 72 disciples from the mission entrusted to them by the Master, while they are joyfully recounting the fruits of their labors, in the same hour Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to babes. I, Father, for such was your gracious will. All right, there is a lot there, um, but basically it is to know that everything that Christ did was to reveal the Father, all right? So all Christ did and said, um, Christ being the divine revelation of God um, shows us the Father and the Spirit, actually. Uh, in all that he did, miracles, um, travel, um, whatever, uh, the passion, um, and taught parables, right? Uh, shows us the Father, all right? Boom. Divine revelation, right? The revealing or the showing of the divine God. Simply there. And this being a Christology class, that, that should resonate with us on, on a pretty big level here. A lot of those terms should sound familiar. All right. Chapter 21. Jesus speaks only of the fatherhood of God and of his own sonship. He does not speak directly of the Spirit. Interesting. 
who is love and thereby the union of the Father and the Son. Nonetheless, that he says of the Father and of himself, Son flows from the fullness of the Spirit which is in him, which fills his heart, invades his own, I inspires, and enlivens his action from the depths. Hence, that rejoicing in the Holy Spirit, the union of Christ and the Holy Spirit, a union which is, he is perfectly aware, is expressed in that rejoicing, which in a certain way renders perceptible its hidden source. So, <clears throat> it is only in rejoicing that we can see the Spirit. We see the Spirit in the um, holy and good actions of the other, right? Um, we believe as Catholics that if one lives by, the, say, the virtue of love, um, towards their neighbor, you know, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Um, when we see that love in action, that is the spirit, right? We can look at that action and say, there's the spirit in living or enlivening or indwelling in that person, just like it was for Christ. Um, so the Holy Spirit need not be seen, right? but is seen in the rejoicing good will and action of Christ and in all of us and well and the good will and action of us all. Good. Boom. All right. So don't forget the good that you do for one another is the spirit living inside of you as well right all right jesus of nazareth is the one who comes in the holy spirit and who brings the spirit as the gift proper to his own person in order to di distribute uh that gift by means of this humanity he will baptize you with the holy spirit in the gospel of luke this revelation of the holy spirit is confirmed and added to as the intimate source of the life and messianic activity of Jesus Christ. In the light of what Jesus says in the farewell discord in the upper room, the Holy Spirit is revealed in a new and fuller way. He is not only the gift to the person, the person of the Messiah, but it is a person gift. Jesus foretells his coming as a, that of another counselor, who being the spirit of truth will lead the apostles and the church into truth. Alrighty then. So again, we're getting kind of deep here. Um, the Holy Spirit is God's existence in the world. Pretty much plain and simple. Uh, so as Christ ascends to heaven, as Christ being God, oops, sends to heaven, the counselor, oh boy, i.e. the Holy Spirit, being God, and being God as well, <clears throat> he sends upon the church, us um, remember Pentecost boom so um, God never leaves the earth right so this is basically saying God never abandons us Oof. all right big point all right we're almost through it so uh, 23, at the Paschal events, the Passion, Death, and Resurrection of Christ are also the time of the new coming of the Holy Spirit as the Paraclete and the Spirit of Truth. They are the time of the new beginning of the self-communication of the Triune God to humanity and the Holy Spirit through the work of Christ the Redeemer. So, as Christ fulfills the Father's will, the Holy Spirit is fully revealed, and therefore we finally see, um, for the first time in human history, the revelation of the Trinity, okay? So, um, <clears throat> that's kind of the main idea. <clears throat> Christ's redeeming work and sending of the Spirit upon the church. Remember, the church is us, right? Um, and sending the Spirit upon the church. Um gives us the first full revelation of God as Trinity in human history. Cool. All right. 
Final paragraph. Whew, this is a long one. Yeah, that 24. This is one of the reasons why I gave it to you guys as a as a paragraph by itself. It's a big paragraph, and yes, the main point is massive. Um, but we're going to simplify it here. So it can be said, therefore, that the messianic raising up of Christ and the Holy Spirit uh, reaches its zenith in the resurrection, um, in its fullness, basically, in which he reveals himself as the Son of God, full of power, and this power, the sources of which gush forth from the inscrutable Trinitarian communion is manifested, first of all, in the fact that the risen Christ does two things. On the one hand, he fulfills God's promise already expressed through the prophet's words, a new heart I will give you, a new spirit I will put in you, my spirit. And on the other hand, he fulfills his promise made to the apostles with the words, if I go, I will send him to you. It is he, the spirit of truth, the paraclete, sent by the risen Christ to transform us with his own risen image. All right, so it's through the Spirit that we participate in the resurrection of Christ and our death by rising again as well and joining Christ forever in eternity and especially uh, at the end of time in our resurrected bodies as well. So um, those two things you want to remember in this paragraph. Um, so Christ fulfills the prophecies of the Old Testament in his passion, death, and resurrection. Oop, there's only one S in resurrection. All right. Um, and he uh, offers us the Holy Spirit as the way, as the, well, fullness. Well, how do we say this? As the... Um, vehicle by which we are to um, rejoin God in eternity. A vehicle here, not in the sense of a car, but a vehicle in which, like, the engine that turns within us that allows us to um, return to God, where we're offered the Holy Spirit. All right, so I'll uh, make sure that when I put out the study guide, which will be after the, we go through the Declaration Dominus De Jesus, I'll have all the main points for you to study from um, for the final. All right, uh, remember that... Um, you know, the, the video came out today, um, and then questions for the final. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove that really quickly because that's going to go into your study guide. So next week I'll have the video that introduces the report. You'll have your thesis and outline due on next Wednesday, so a week from now, and then the rough draft due at the end of that week. So that's all I want you to do that week. That's all I want you to do. Boom. All right. Um, and then the week after that, your final draft is due basically on the same day as we start Dominus Jesus. All right. Um, and then I'll fill you in as the videos go on about what's kind of expected down the road here. All right. As you can see, your study guide is going to be released on that day, which is uh, May 15th. All right. So as always, um, stay safe, stay well, and God bless.